<laughs> hi Anna, hi Sophie. Hi. So we'll jump straight in. Um, this is Louisa from Teddington. <laughs> um, and she teaches adults and teens in schools, so teachers and pupils. And she's going to lead us on a lovely stretchy yoga practice this morning. So over to you, Louisa. Thank you, Nikki. So welcome to your time for you this morning. Half an hour dedicated to you. Um, before we start, if you've got a bolster <laughs> um, or a couple of cushions, don't run around the house crazy looking for stuff. Um, you can just kind of fold a couple of cushions over off your sofa or a duvet, whatever you've got handy. And you might want to have a brick as well. So maybe a couple of things, if you've got a bolster, um, a couple of cushions or a brick and a cushion or a brick and a bolster. So you've got something for your head um, and something to put underneath your back. Um, I thought what would be nice to do after, I don't know about you, the kind of week you've had, sitting, walking, carrying, I don't know, picking up children, whatever it's been, um, we'll go through a little kind of postural reset um, and we'll keep the energy low. It's Saturday morning, it's early um, and uh, yeah, I hope, you, I hope you enjoy it. So welcome again, if you just join the room, welcome to your practice for you this morning. Um, we're going to begin. And I'm just gonna move myself backwards. So we're going to start by lying on the back of the body. Before you just bring yourself down, uh, have close by your props. Just before we kind of get involved with them, have close by for you to get up and reach for it. A couple of things, something for your back, something for your head. And bring yourself to lying when you're ready. And you don't need anything underneath you for a moment. Just bring yourself down to the floor. And if you're a little bit chilly, I've got to say a little bit chilly in your house this morning, just wear your socks, keep any layers on that you need, don't get cold. So we're gonna lie flat and you may want to bend your knees or straighten the legs. Really, I'd like you just to kind of take a moment to feel the body this morning, to Notice a little bit how body just speaks to you in these first few seconds and the conversation it starts to have with you and let any kind of movement be led by what you're noticing. So just coming into the body a little bit, being present in your body, feeling your body, parts of the body on the floor, maybe parts that feel heavy, parts that feel tense, Maybe parts feel at ease and quite comfortable straight on the floor. So just taking a few seconds to adjust to being on the ground, to feeling the weight of the body sink, to noticing any immediate feedback, how body speaks to you, how your energy is speaking to you this morning as well. Again, it's been a, maybe a long week for some of us, or it's felt like a long week, or however long. <laughs> um, so just taking a moment to listen, really, just to listen a little bit more deeply. And then just so we have a, a sense of where we are in our space and we're in our homes, but a sense of where we are in a slightly wider space, have a sense of how much room you take up on your mat. Maybe you've got a, a sense of where the edges of the mat lay or sit around you. As we move a little bit into our wider environment, just kind of developing a little bit of that skill of exteroception, interoception, or proception. Having, a, again, a sense, you haven't got to look around, having a sense of your space, you know, things, objects in your room, to your left of you maybe, to the right of you, how far they are in relation to you, maybe behind you, behind your head, behind, past your feet. And then we'll come back a little bit more inwardly. Uh, 
And let's start to just shift a little bit into some breathing now before we just get into movement. So we found a comfortable position. We're feeling relatively at ease. Maybe a little bit of shuffling still happening. I'd like you to take a, a slow, deep, but not too forced breath in through the nose. And you may want to breathe out through the nose or the mouth. You know, just go with whatever comes first, whatever's most natural. Do that a couple more times. A deep, but not too forced breath in through the nose. And a breath out through the nose or mouth. Everybody, well done. We'll do that just once more. Take your time. Enjoying just breathing in deeply, not too forced. And out completely. And um, we'll start by just hugging the knees into the belly. If you've just joined the room, we're lying on the back, so welcome. Um, you may want a couple of props for this practice. Grab a cushion, maybe a couple of cushions or a bolster if you've got anything or a brick. Um, I'm going to keep the energy low to the floor, to the ground this morning. I'll do a little bit of a postural reset. So something quite quite useful. And you're going to think too much about this, which is always good. <laughs> so we're hugging the knees in a little bit. Again, just taking a moment to let the body speak to you. We're listening, not even really to my voice, listening to the body and receiving any kind of feedback that comes through. And you may want to circle the knees a few times, so kind of taking them out wide and then circling them back in. There's a few directions you might want to play with. You may want to scrunch up pretty tight and even lift the head. So just having a little bit of kind of a investigation time, if you like. <laughs> and then we'll place the feet back onto the floor. And we're going to reach for our prop, whatever we've got, whether it's that cushion and we folded the cushion over, a little thin bolster. And we're going to start by placing the prop quite high up the back and we're going to pop that underneath um, or better word across the shoulder blades so as you put your prop across shoulder blades you might find that your head is kind of kind of hanging <laughs> kind of hanging in, in midair so grab your second prop even a book would do anything you've got handy for underneath your head so we've got a prop across the shoulder blades, hopefully not digging in, <laughs> and something under the head. Arms can spread out wide, a little bit like a kind of a T-shape, if you like. And then you may just check out or kind of test out what feels good here with the, for the low back with your legs being extended the whole way down or the knees bent. You may even prefer knees knocked in, so we have a nice kind of neutral pelvis. Okay, and when we've found somewhere that we can begin, maybe even softly closing the eyes. Breathing if we've forgotten to breathe, take a conscious breath. So you might know what overly, um, Breathe deeply here. You're in a, an accentuated shape. The chest is pretty open. We've got something beneath the upper back. So breathing in very deeply, it just might not feel that comfortable. So be kind to the breath, be kind to yourself here. Don't push anything too far. Okay. Taking a few moments to just acclimatize to being in this slightly awkward shape. <laughs> and let's go through a few little kind of uh, areas here so we can relax a little bit the face. Try to soften shoulder blades even into whatever you've got beneath you. Try to let shoulder blades soften and you can almost kind of visualize little bony edges of your shoulder blades and little bony tips. And imagine that they could soften a little bit and melt into the prop that you've got underneath them. And then if we move into the upper chest, we haven't got to push or accentuate the shape of the body here. We've got to push into the ribs or flare anything. 
just allowing the natural shape that we've kind of set up, this natural shape to breathe. And we're gonna to try to relax a little bit the belly. We hold a lot of stress in the gut, some of us, small intestines in particular. So imagine you could relax this feeling of relaxing organs, relaxing your gut, maybe even taking it as far as feeling that you could relax your small intestines. And we're just going to spend about, about five more breaths here, trying to, want to relinquish a little bit. So this is a little bit of a yin practice in the essence of we are relinquishing a little bit control, where we are relinquishing how much energy we put in or don't need to put in, if you want to look at it like that. And we are deeply listening and witnessing the body change, the stretch, the sensations of torsion, we've applied skillfully, and you can feel, hopefully, there's a little shift, a little ease that naturally happens. Let's take just another couple of breaths here. Nice, just kind of calm, soft breathing, not too forced, not too deep. Just enough so that there's that steady flow of breath. Okay, well done, everybody. It's a tricky shape to be in, and I know we carry real, real tension and tightness in the upper back and chest. So we're going to move down the spine now. And the best way to kind of move yourself without jarring the connective tissues too quickly, which we've been stretching for several minutes, is to bend your knees so your feet land flat on your mat. Bring your forearms down so they're a little bit more kind of to the side of you. Rather than kind of twist your body over to the side, bend your elbows, press them down a little bit or into your, into your cushion or into the floor, whatever you've got available, or hands, elbows. Brace a little bit your center, so brace up your tummy, and try your best if you can to lift yourself straight-ish forwards, rather than a massive kind of rock over, like I just demoed. <laughs> okay, and you've got a little bit up slowly. Take your prop, and we're going to move it about two or three inches down the spine. You may not need the thing that you had underneath your head, so probably going to want to remove that now. And now we've just got that one prop, whether it's a cushion or whatever we've used, a little soft brick, whatever it is, underneath the lower rib cage. So we're not quite in lower back territory yet, lower rib cage. Then when you've brought your head down, upper back down, test out here again, how legs, the setup of your legs, you know, will affect the amount of pull or torsion again on the lower back, especially, and around the abdomen, around the psoas here. So what feels right for you? That's your question. What are my needs this morning? How does my body feel? How much is enough? We're looking for enough stretch sensation, but without, you know, without pain. <laughs> this is just about enough quality sensation that we can breathe with stay present with and in this next part so we're midway down the spine let's just go through a little kind of areas here exploring maybe relaxing the face take a breath if you've held that for a little while take a breath maybe even allow a little sigh out through the mouth First, it might feel a little bit jarring. It might feel like we are tensing or bracing a little bit or clenching within the body. So when you can, noticing first, observing, noticing those little unconscious things that we do. And maybe there's some possibility of easing, easing control, easing that push and pull that we do so well, <laughs> some of us do so well, pushing, pulling towards energy as well, push, pull. Ribs might have the 
capacity to soften. They, they probably do. They have the capacity to soften. Again, the belly, gut, and anywhere else that you may feel. What's lovely to practice in some of these still postures is a Buddhist mindfulness meditation, shamatha, which translates as calm abidance. And even just a few moments of shamatha as a practice alone is just wonderfully calming, centering and focusing. So with shamatha, all we're really doing is observing the natural rhythm of your breathing. We're not trying to influence the breath, or deepen it, it's not a noisy breath, it's just your natural breath coming and going. And we are just merely observing calmly the natural rhythm of the breath. Spend about 20 more seconds here, we'll practice shamatha, sensations come and go. Noticing the last breath move in, flow in, and flow out. We're going to start to think about traveling down a little further down the spine now. So we don't disrupt things too, too much. So what we'll do is we'll bend the knees, pop your feet back on the mat if your knees aren't already bent. And you can either kind of wriggle your whole body <laughs> a little bit up your mat so that your prop ends up conveniently in the low back space, or you could kind of press into a little bridge, use your hands, depending on what you've got beneath you, to roll the prop down. Now, here's two options for the last part of this um, postural reset. Your prop might be right in the low back with your tailbone or your back of your pelvis on the floor. Now, it's quite deep, depends on how thick that, that uh, prop is, but that can feel quite deep. If that's too strong, roll your prop a little bit lower down and actually kind of sit on it. As you kind of sit on it, and that might feel a little bit less um, accentuated, that, that deep lower back um, curve there. So test out what feels better. Then add on testing out where your legs, um, how they influence the degree of stretch. So legs straight, knees bent. Maybe you go back to your first position with your prop. Maybe you actually do go back to having it in the deep lumbar curve there with the tailbone on the mat. So again, have a little play where you kind of sussed out what feels right for you this morning. Take a breath in slowly through the nose. You may even open the mouth. And we'll be a little bit distracted just for a few moments and let the sensory feedback, everything that body is communicating to you, just, just be heard for a moment. So maybe go towards areas that you can feel, areas that you know there's some maybe tension, maybe you're tensing, maybe there's some unconscious stuff happening. We might be going into a little bit of kind of holding the pose, holding, gripping organs, the body. Perhaps another breath, skillful breath, a helpful breath in and out to find some ease in. We haven't got to push anything, we're just making space for ease. And then we'll return to the practice of shamatha. So a little bit of diverting attention back now to the breath. Trying to not interfere with breathing. We are simply allowing it to just come and go. 
may feel really shallow, it may feel very faint, really light, maybe even barely noticeable, but it, it is there, it is that current always there. And we're allowing attention really just to notice it. It wants to be noticed, it's waiting for us to notice it. So we'll take attention to observing breath just as it is. And we'll be here for about another half a minute in the practice of shamatha and in the shape that we're in. Perhaps taking a moment to reflect how tricky it can really be to steady attention just in for a few seconds, how that went for you, just that little mini meditation there, how that went for you, even those few moments, maybe there was just one second where we could really notice the breath and then we were off somewhere else in our heads, as we expect. But think about the coming back process as it really is that returning back that we are practicing as it is a, a practice, practicing meditation. So let's remove this prop. <laughs> Finally, you might be thinking. So bend your knees if they're not already. Little hover of the hips. Use your hands. Pull out what you've got beneath you. Pop it off to the side. Roll the back down slowly and feel the body on the floor. Take a deep breath in, a little sigh out through the mouth. Feel that lovely contrast, not just physically, from not now being in a shape, but energetically as well. There's quite a lovely contrast that you may notice, you may sense. And I'll let you choose here, just for the next few moments, what you do next. You might want to let the knees sway side to side. You might want to hug them in. Lean towards what you feel or hear your body's asking you to give it. What your body's kind of asking you to give it, let that be what you do next. So trusting what you know, what you can feel, what you can hear. Your little inner voice. Well done, everybody. So we move through the upper, middle, lower back. I'd like to do some rotation. So we're going to rotate around our axis a little bit with a little twist now. So we've kind of moved the spine in all directions, mostly. We'll do a little lateral uh, flexion at the end. So let's actually come to roll now. You might want to do this facing me. If your mat is facing the camera, if it's not, don't worry. You're going to roll. Um, onto your side body. Now I've rolled onto my left side. You can roll onto any side where it's easiest for your camera. Okay. And when you get onto your side, you're literally on your side body as if you were going to sleep, but don't fall asleep for me. You're on your side body um, and we're going to stack up the knees and we're going to stack up the hips just naturally. And the knees aren't kind of too high up. They're not in your chest <laughs> and they're not too far away from you. Let's say the knees are kind of roughly in line with your hips. So just a natural stacked position. Your head is on the floor and your bottom arm, that's a bit awkward right now, is on the floor. And you've reached that arm out onto the floor. So in my case, it's my left arm. It's on the floor and the palm is facing up to the ceiling. And then with your other arm, your free arm, which is my right arm right now, I'm going to lower that down. So I'm just going to hold my arms for a moment so you can see the palms are going to meet on the floor. I'm going to kind of crocodile jaw. I don't know why I thought about crocodile jaw. <laughs> OK, stick with me with your with your top hand that you've sealed onto your bottom palm that's on the floor. Take a breath in and reach forwards like you're sliding that hand 
past that bottom hand and you're reaching even out onto your floor. You've taken a deep breath in. Then you're lifting that arm, reaching up, moving away from my wall. And then you're turning through the spine, through the chest, around your axis, fanning open through the ribs and you're landing in what feels quite a tightly wrung out twist. Try to let that right shoulder or your left one, depending which um, way you've gone, find a little bit of flow, something, maybe your elbow, maybe the wrist of that hovering arm that you've moved over, find the floor so it's not just kind of dangling in the air. And again, it's a little bit like the uh, style we've been practicing. So the essence of yin is to relinquish. We think about being the shape. Let's try to not brace here. Let's try to not kind of push into the shape or accentuate the ribs here. Is it possible to breathe? It definitely is, <laughs> but it's possible to breathe. We know that. Is it possible then to use, especially your exhales, to find some ease? Skillful breaths here to find some ease into this shape. We haven't got to tidy up. We haven't got to pin that top knee down or press with anything. Try to let the body breathe in the shape, as awkward as it may feel. Steadying your breath, it feels a little bit bothered, maybe a little bit trapped, a little bit stifled, steadying the breath. Maybe relaxing again, the belly, the gut. Well done, everybody. So we're in quite a little tight twist here. And you can probably feel that whole right side pretty much. Maybe from that armpit all the way down the leg, down the back of the hip. Maybe running through the center of the spine, around the waist, around the ribs. Let's just give this side about 20, 30 more seconds. If you want to come back to Shamata, you can. So just calmly observing your natural breathing. Well, that might be a little bit uncomfortable here. You might feel that you just need to keep focusing on a steady breath, maybe steadying a little bit with some effort, just a little bit your breathing if it's a bit uncomfortable. Take just another breath or two. Well done, really good stuff, well done. Okay, and we're going to slowly draw the knees together and squeeze them a little bit back to the center. You're gonna feel a bit twisted, a bit wonky. So when you've kind of got your knees back, Press your feet down, bring your hips back into center. So you're back to lying in a natural position on your back. And if you know you're craving, back is craving, a little hugging of those knees, go for it. You may want to do a brief happy baby or something a bit bigger or wider. And we'll do exactly the same on the other side. I'm just going to spin myself around so you're not looking at my back. You haven't got to do that though, you know what you're doing. <laughs> so we're going to slowly roll onto the other side of the body, purely on the side body to start with. Knee stacked, hips stacked, bottom arm on the floor, so the head on the floor. You've got your new free arm, <laughs> you're going to seal your kind of crocodile jaw arms on the floor. And then we'll take a breath in with that top hand as we reach past the bottom hand, got a little bit of even there, the beginning of a stretch in the, in the shoulder and the scapula, and we'll raise the arm, and we'll start to turn through the chest, turning through the spine around our axis, and landing in our twist. And just so we're a little bit more comfortable with that other arm that you've moved now through the space. And the elbow, the shoulder, the armpit soften a little bit into the floor. How does it feel to breathe into this side? How does this side maybe compare? Probably already making um, comparison in our mind, really making those little observations. 
Excellent, everybody. Well done. And just skillfully breathing however you need to here. Skillfully breathing to help find a little bit of ease. Sitting with the sensations of stretch, not getting too involved, letting them breathe, letting them communicate, letting the body communicate while we listen a little bit like a little witness, listening and observing. About just another half a minute left here, 20, 30 seconds. Well done, last couple of breaths. Okay, excellent, really lovely. Now let's think how we make that journey out before we start to move. Consider maybe just a little squeeze of the knees, maybe a little gentle brace of your center, just to support the lower back. You're gonna roll back onto your back slowly. And then when you get there, just recenter your hips, so you're not wonky on your mat. <laughs> and you can hug legs in, you might just wanna lay the body flat. Again, there's a lovely rebounding of energy, sensation, connective tissues, rebounding after you come out back on the stretch. So letting that just uh, process for a moment. And we're nearly out of time. And I, I, I couldn't quite squeeze in my last posture with you guys, which would have been a little banana shape to laterally flex the spine to the last of the movements. But just for about 20 seconds, lay your body flat or have the knees bent. You haven't got to do any shape or use any props. Maybe the eyes are softly open or closed for just the last 20 seconds or so. And like we did at the start, take a deep, not too forced, maybe even a deep and soft breath in through the nose. And allow your breath to breathe out, to exhale. You might want to do that one more time, taking a nice, slow, deep, full breath in. And a feeling of complete breath out. Whenever you feel ready to open the eyes, to softly blink them open, just take your time to move. Just kindly, we did a little bit of uh, deep stuff there actually, even just half an hour. So hopefully that was useful <laughs> and I'm sure interesting in many ways. And thank you for letting me share that with you. And <laughs> well done everybody, thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. A pleasure, absolute pleasure. Awesome. Thank you, Louisa. Thank you. <clears throat> I have to say it's such a lovely choice of, of yin yoga because we're just in such a world of yang, aren't we? And it's that was a really nice choice this morning. So thank you. Um, and just out of interest for everybody watching, how long did you hold the poses for in that practice? Um, yeah, the guided length. My back's a bit tight, so sometimes I moved a bit within it. Mm. Uh, my upper back's a bit tight today, so yeah, yeah, it takes a little bit of time with the year mm -hmm. to build up the time, especially early in the morning. So, well done. I wasn't sure about doing yin first thing in the morning, but I actually yes. thought the energy of yin and the pace yeah. might go down quite nicely, yeah. <laughs> might sit nicely at the moment. So, do you well, touch do you teenagers, teenagers yin, Louisa? Um, I dabble with yeah. yin. Yeah, I just wondered whether it'd probably be quite intense for them, wouldn't it? They actually really like it that when I have dabbled, they do anything actually so meditative, they actually want more of. Yeah. 
but it's getting to that point with them which takes some time sometimes yeah the beginning they want yeah mm. the, the, the nicer looking stuff yeah <laughs> fancy stuff <laughs> <laughs> Your guidance from the breath is lovely. I love the way you talk about not forcing the breath. It's really good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The feedback's such lovely. You you don't really get much feedback as a teacher. Yeah. So thank you. That's actually, thank you. That's nice. <laughs> thank you so yeah, much. Hearing. But did you hold us, you know, for what, two, three, four, five minutes in those poses this morning? Yeah. Yeah. About that time. It's surprising actually how quickly it goes um, once you settle. Yeah. Setting price, it takes about, I mean, this is just, yeah, about 120 seconds, it's thought to settle, two minutes. Then you start the process of actually relinquishing and easing. It's a really fascinating process. Yeah. Um, yeah, three, four, five minutes. Yeah. The only contraindication I've heard with teaching teens to yoga, uh, sorry, teaching yoga to, uh, yin yoga to teens is, um, around their thoughts and what thoughts are you leaving them with mm -hmm. um but like you Louisa if I if I teach yin, I teach more yin to therapeutic students mm -hmm. but my school class at the moment are really asking for yin style practice mm -hmm. just like please can we just rest <laughs> so I think actually you know that shows that they're ready as you say Louisa are they ready to be still then yeah go for it yeah, yeah. They, they are open they, they really are open once you go there with them yeah um, you can always fair. yeah you can always give them some kind of counting practice that if they don't want to be left with their thoughts they can be counting back from 10 mm -hmm. you know and then counting back from 10 or well, well, you know some fair. some kind of anchor for their yeah. thoughts if, if they need that yeah they might lean into a, a word I'm, I'm here now or if yeah. they have a little mantra or some culpa for themselves or something they need to say to themselves today. They might lean into a, a word or, um, yeah, nice so kind of abundance. <laughs> Got those ideas flowing now. <laughs> yeah. no, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you have a lovely day, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, have a great day. Over the weekend. Lovely, lovely way to start the day. Oh, good. My pleasure. <laughs> have a lovely day. It was Bye. wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Louisa. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.